In this video, we're going to learn how to make a coin flip simulator in C++. So to simulate a coin toss or a coin flip, what we need to do is randomly generate either heads or tails because a coin will have a head side and a tail side. And so the results of flipping a coin should either be heads or tails. We're going to use random number generation to help us solve this problem. We'll include the C STD lib library because this library includes a function called rand, and the rand function is going to return a non-negative random integer, we're going to have to seed the random number generator using the srand function that's also in csddlib. To do that, we're going to use the current time as a seed value. We'll include the seed time library, so we can use the time function in this library to access the current time. And the first thing we'll do in our main function is seed the random number generator using srand. So we call srand and we provide it with a seed value as an argument. In C++, when we use the rand function, we're actually using pseudo random number generation. What that means is that the seed value is actually going to determine the sequence of random numbers that rand is going to return. So if we provide the same seed value each time our program runs, we're going to get the same sequence of random numbers each time our program runs. And that would not be very good because it wouldn't feel random at that point. We want our program to use a potentially different sequence of random numbers each time it runs. So instead of using the same seed value each time our program runs, we want to supply a seed value that's going to be different each time our program runs. The current time is going to be different each time our program runs. So we can use the current time as a seed value to ensure our program uses a different seed value each time it runs. So if we call the time function and supply it with null as an argument, it's going to return the current time. And then we supply that to srand as an argument to use as the seed value. Now technically the time function is going to return the time with the type time underscore t. We can explicitly convert that to an unsigned int using unsigned int here because technically the srand function expects the type unsigned int. And so we can use this typecast here to ensure that is the type of value that srand is provided as an argument. So next, we can call the rand function to get a random integer between zero and some very large integer. But we only really need two possible values, either heads or tails. What we could do is say that zero is going to represent heads, and one is going to represent tails. And so we could take the random integer returned from the rand function and turn it into either zero or one. The modulus operator is going to allow us to do that. So the operator modulus is going to return the remainder of a division operation. So rand modulus two is going to give us back either zero or one, because if we take any possible integer in this range and divide it by two, the only possible remainders are zero and one. It's going to be a remainder of zero if the integer is even. It's going to be a remainder of one if the integer is odd, because for example, eight divided by two has a remainder of zero, but nine divided by two has a remainder of one. And 10 divided by two is back to having a remainder of zero. And it's going to proceed like this for every possible integer in this range. So we have this way of getting a random integer that's going to be either zero or one. And we're going to say that zero is going to represent heads and one is going to represent tails. So we'll actually define preprocessor constants for each of those. We'll have number define heads zero and number define tails one. Then we'll make a function that's going to randomly return either zero or one, where zero is heads and one is tails. So here we'll have int flip coin, and then we'll supply a definition of this function down here we'll have int flip coin and the function 
is going to use the rand function. We'll say if rand modulus two is equal to zero, this means we have a head. And in that case, we're going to return heads. Otherwise, the only other possibility is that we're going to return tails. So we'll have else return tails. We could then test out this function in main. So up here, we could call flip coin. We could say if flip coin is equal to heads, then we'll output here heads followed by an end line. Otherwise, we'll output tails followed by an end line. So if we save, compile, and run the program, here we initially get heads. If we run the program again, we get heads. And again, we now get tails. We could also put this code inside of a loop body to perform multiple coin flips. So we could have here for int i is equal to zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus. So here we're using a for loop with a counter variable i that's going to go from zero up until 10. So that way the for loop body executes 10 times and 10 coin flips occur. So if we save, compile, and run the program, now we get a whole sequence of coin flips here, where here we had four tails in a row, followed by a heads, followed by a tails, and so on. Now, so far we've chosen to represent heads with zero and tails with one. We could create a function that just returns a string heads or a string tails. So for example, we could have string flip coin two. And then we'll provide a definition of this function down here. So we'll have string flip coin two. And this function will also use the rand function in the same way. We'll have if rand modulus two is equal to zero, then we're going to return the string heads. Otherwise, we're going to return the string tails. So both functions use the rand function in the same way to determine the result of the coin flip. But this function here is going to directly return the string heads or the string tails. We could test this function out in main. So up here in our for loop, we'll now just have C out and flip coin two followed by an inline. And this time, we can just directly output the string returned by the function. So we could save, compile, and run our program, and we'll get a random sequence of tails or heads. One last thing we could do is keep track of the number of occurrences of either heads or tails when we do a sequence of coin flips. So for example, we could have a counter variable, total heads, and initialize it to zero. We'll also have a counter variable, total tails, and we'll initialize it to zero. Then we could check the result of each coin flip and increment either total heads or total tails. So we could have here, if flip coin two returns the string heads, then we're going to increment total heads by one and output here heads followed by and in line. Otherwise, we're going to increment total tails and we'll output tails followed by an in line. And then when this loop is done its work, we could output the total number of heads and total number of tails that were flipped. So we could have here C out total tails followed by total tails and then an end line. And we could also have C out total heads followed by total heads and then an end line. And if we save, compile and run this, we're going to get our sequence of tails or head flips. But now we get the total count of heads and tails that were flipped. We could try it again. And this time here, we get a total of seven heads and three tails. So this is how we can use C++ to simulate a coin flip.
Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.